Hello, dear loved ones. Apparently you may have just heard that I passed away in the last little period. I'm still here. We just celebrated the resurrection of the Savior. We just celebrated him coming forth from the tomb and then ascending. I'm very much still alive. And I'll be looking down and with and around you in the years to come. Sometime if you hear or feel that maybe I'm nearby, just pause and listen spiritually and I hope you'll hear me saying to you, it's all true. Every word is true. And I'm now experiencing that life after death that we talked about our whole lives. And I'll see you soon. Live well. And I send you my love in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Robert George Peterson, Captain Bob, always larger than life. Never met a stranger. His captainship evolved from being a captain of our family houseboat in Lake Powell to becoming a captain leader to friends and family worldwide. He was 81, but had the appearance and energy of a 60 year old. Bob passed away on March 20th, 2018 from pneumonia surrounded by his cherished wife, Catherine, and seven of their eight children. He was preceded in death by his youngest son, David Barton Peterson, and great-grandson, Jackson Samuel MacArthur. Life began for Bob in Logan, Utah on December 27, 1936. His parents, George and Wanda Peterson, moved to Stockton, California, where Bob spent all of his teenage years. He graduated from Stockton High School early and received a four-ride basketball and academic scholarship to Brigham Young University. He served a mission for the LDS Church in Sydney, Australia, and was part of the Mormon Yankees basketball team that traveled throughout cross-lighting in the country, and was proud to say that he served in the Air Force National Guard. After serving his mission, he met his sweetheart, Catherine Barton, at Brigham Young University. Three and a half months later, they were married in the Salt Lake Temple on August 22nd, 1960. He graduated from the University of Utah with a bachelor's degree in banking and finance. He loved serving within the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He was called at the age of 34 to serve on the Young Men's General Board and then on the Melchizedek Priesthood General Board for the LDS Church. One of his favorite callings was serving as bishop in this very ward of the Cottonwood Second Ward. And also two years he spent as director of the Oakland Visitors Temple Visitor Center, where he loved he was loved by his 80 sister and couple missionaries. Bob has always had a love of the Book of Mormon. He looked for every opportunity he could share his testimony of it. Recently, his calling was to write to and to motivate the missionaries in the war, which he did every month. Bob's greatest attribute in business was his ability to sell. He was directly involved in over 20 businesses worldwide. He began by selling clothes out of his locker in high school to selling cookware, china, Bernina sewing machines and diamonds, all while attending BYU. Bob started Magic Mill, where he manufactured the Magic Mill wheat grinder and imported the Bosch kitchen machines from Germany. As a master of sales and speaking, Captain Bob could never give a talk without using his hands. <laughs> he would always keep his audience intrigued and laughing using several visual aids. Bob has always been the head cheerleader for each of his children's enterprises. The Peterson Family Foundation has been able to present academic scholarships in memory of their son, David, to over a thousand seniors. Always with a spirit of resilience, Bob recovered from two melanoma cancer surgeries. Bob and Catherine have traveled extensively to all seven continents of the world, but the favorite was to go to their family cabin, the Creamery, in Bear Lake, Idaho. 
Bob will re be remembered as one whose hand you could never shake because he would always give you a hug first. Captain Bob's eight children, 29 grandchildren, and almost 18 great-grandchildren will surely miss the world's greatest cheerleader. Everyone knew they were Bob's favorite. We're gonna miss you, Captain. Forever our Captain. Your task to build a better world got set. I answer, how? This world is such a large, vast place, so complicated now. And I'm so small and useless, Lord. There's nothing I can do. But God in all his wisdom said, my sons and my daughters, just build a better you. Daddy, you better be our guardian angel because we're going to need you. We're going to need your support and your love as we continue to become better because of him. Christ taught us to serve, to feed, and to clothe. My dad followed his teachings, and his hands became those. As Christ rose again, my dad will rise again. We love him. I miss you, Dad. Take care. I am so grateful for the time that I have been able to serve my father these past 10 days. There's something I will always cherish. I'm not sure how I'm going to do life without him. I will do my best to serve others and make him proud. I love you, Dad. I love this man. I uh, miss him. Our, our youth will miss him. Uh, and he's one of a kind. He served the Lord well, and he performed his labors in mortality with complete dedication and devotion. Now, what would Bob have us do? His love and desire for his posterity will never cease. To fulfill then his fondest desires, may I suggest that every one of his children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, and each of us, as friends and family, continue on the path of righteousness, keeping the covenants and commandments of God, and living worthy to one day return home with the joy and happiness Bob is now experiencing. That's what would happen. That's what he would always say, right? But if you have the spirit in your life and you have enthusiasm, this is what would happen. That's what he would say. Well, this is for Captain Bob. Oh my gosh, you're crazy. Thank you. Sorry. Okay, we got it. You know, I really am grateful to be able to share some feelings that I have now that our dear father has passed away. And it still doesn't seem real. I still feel like he's going to walk through the door any minute and that we're going to enjoy his wonderful smile and laugh. And, and um, I can't think about it too long because it's still very close. But. Um, 
I've been so grateful to my family for the wonderful support they have given me. Every morning I get up and I look down in the garden room and there's so much love from family and from friends and people have brought flowers, people have brought food and just made a call and notes. I have a stack this high of letters and notes from people. How much they loved our dear father and my sweet husband. I'm so grateful for, it's been almost a month. He passed away on March 20th, 2018. And, um, and it doesn't seem possible that it's been a month since he has left us, but I just, I have such deep feelings for um, women that have lost their husbands or husbands that have lost their wives and that I didn't really appreciate before. But as I look back um, over the life of Robert Peterson, I feel so blessed in being able to live with him for almost 58 years. I thought it would be a lot longer. We always talked about celebrating our 60th together and I still will celebrate that. Um, I just am grateful to my family. I want them to know of my deep love that I have for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I think my children know how much I love the Book of Mormon. And it's very appropriate because I've been reading the Book of Mormon with the youth in our ward. They read it in 90 days. And this morning I woke up about 6.30 and I thought, I think I can finish the Book of Mormon today. And I've probably read it 20 or 30 times. And, and always it's my most spiritual time in my life when I can look at and read again Moroni 10, where it talks about the importance of asking our Heavenly Father if these things are true. And as I read this morning, I just kept reading and finished Ether and got into Moroni and as I finished the Book of Mormon I was so full of the Spirit I think maybe because Bob had passed away and it's the first time that I finished the Book of Mormon without him and as I looked at, at the past couple of months and, and how sick he was during that first month and then passing away just a month ago. I have so much to be grateful for and thank my Father in Heaven for the opportunity that I have to be close to my Father in Heaven and talk to my Father in Heaven because um, he, I just felt closer to Him than I ever have before and how grateful I am for the knowledge that I have of the truthfulness of the Book of Mormon and of the closeness I feel to my Father in Heaven and His Son, Jesus Christ. We now have to move forward without Him right here next to me. And I know He's watching over me and I know He will help me through this time. And I'm so grateful to have Amy here because then I know that I'm not alone, she's with me, and I'm also not alone because of my Father in Heaven. And I'm not alone because I know Bob is with me, and he has his arm around me, and he's telling me how beautiful I am every day, and I'm just so grateful to have had that love for 58 years. So thank you, Rebecca, for putting this together, and uh, I'm excited to even go back and look at the pictures myself. And I love each one of you, and I'm so grateful that I'm your mom, your grandma, your great-grandma, and, um, and I am on Grammy Peterson. And so Grammy Catherine is what all of the grandchildren call me, and, and I love that title of being Grammy Catherine. So I love each one of you, and I say these things humbly in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.